Thank you for your patience. Um, are we all set in the back? We're great. Thank you. So I'd like to welcome all of you to the Institute for Mathematics and its Applications here at the IMA. I'm sorry, here at the University of Minnesota. My name is Daniel Spurn. I'm the director of this institute. Um, this lecture has been made possible by uh, the Arnold Family Fund and from, uh, funds from the National Science Foundation. The IMA has been hosting a public lecture series for the past 20 years, and it brings together distinguished scientists to the Twin Cities whose mathematical research resonates with the general public. Past speakers have discussed topics ranging from the use of cryptography in the internet to the design of compact space telescopes using origami to the mathematical models of snow in the movie Frozen. This evening, I'm delighted to introduce Kokichi Sugihara. Dr. Sugihara is a professor at the Meiji Institute for Advanced Study of Mathematical Sciences at Meiji University in Tokyo, Japan. His research involves Voronoi diagrams and their applications, robust implementation of geometric algorithms, computer vision and computer graphics, and the mathematics of vision perception. He has written four books and over 200 papers. Professor Sugihara is known for his award-winning 3D Optical Illusions, winning first place at the Best Illusion of the Year contest in 2010 and 2013, and second place in 2015 and 2016. Professor Sugihara received his undergraduate and PhDs from the University of Tokyo and has held positions at Nagoya University, University of Tokyo, and since 2009 has been on the faculty of Meiji University. Tonight, Professor Sugihara will be giving the Arnold Family Lecture on his work on illusions entitled Impossible Objects, the Mathematics of 3D Illusions. Please welcome with me, Dr. Sugihara. Thank you very much for kind introduction. Good evening. It's my great pleasure to be here and to have this chance to talk about impossible objects. Impossible objects are a kind of optical illusions, and today I would like to show various types of impossible objects made using mathematics, and I hope you could enjoy them. And also, I would be very glad if you could have some ideas about how much mathematics are useful to create new illusions. Also, how difficult it is to see and understand the shape of the object by our eyes. Let me start. Impossible objects originally meant objects that couldn't exist as real physical object. They can only be represented in pictures. These are some examples. When we see these pictures, we have the impression that they are three-dimensional structures. But at the same time, we feel something funny. We feel they cannot exist. The left one depicts the cyclic structure of the steps but if we go up along the stairs, we eventually come back to the start point, which is impossible. The central picture is composed of three straight rods connected to form a triangle, but the triangle is twisted and it also appears to be impossible. These two figures were first proposed by British scientist Lionel Penrose and his son Roger Penrose. The light one is one I drew myself, but it's similar to the Penrose triangle, and so let me call it Penrose rectangle. And it's natural to ask, are impossible objects really impossible? The answer is no. There are at least three tricks that can be used to construct three-dimensional objects from impossible, pictures of impossible objects. Let me show those um, tricks using the Penrose rectangle as an example. This is a paper object made using the first trick. The appearance is the same as a Penrose rectangle, but if we change our viewpoint, the object looks like that. It's not closed, and the top corner is disconnected. And so the <coughs> disconnected part align accidentally when we see it from a special viewpoint, and it looks like a Penrose triangle, no, rectangle. So this 
is the trick which we call discontinuity trick. This is a fast trick. Next, this is a paper object made using the second trick. We didn't use a discontinuity trick, and so every part which looks connected is actually connected in the three-dimensional space. But still, we can construct the Penrose rectangle as shown here. If we change the viewpoint, we can understand the faces are curved, not plain. Um, the faces are curved surfaces, but we cut the edges of the surface in such a way that they look straight when we see it from the special viewpoint. And so we have an impression that the Penrose rectangle can be realized like that. This is a second trick, and we call it the curved surface trick. The discontinuity trick and the curved surface trick are widely known, and they have been used in many areas, such as trick sculptures in the past. Next, this is an object made using the third trick. Because we don't use the discontinuity trick, any part which looks connected is actually connected, and we don't use the curved surface trick, and so every face is planar. But still, we can construct the Penrose rectangle. The trick is can be understood if we see it from different directions. So what is a trick? I understand that the trick is that we use angles to connect the faces at non no, no. We use angles other than 90 degrees to connect the faces. When we see the Penrose rectangle, we have an impression that the faces are connected at right angles. But if we restrict to right angles, we cannot construct the object. Uh, it can be constructed only when we allow arbitrary angles. And so I call this the non-rectangularity trick. Now I have just shown you three tricks to construct three-dimensional object from the picture of impossible object. This continuity trick, curved surface trick, and non-rectangularity trick. Among them, the third trick, the non-rectangularity trick, is most stable in the sense that if we change the viewpoint a little, the trick is least visible. The trick does not become visible by a small displacement of the <coughs> viewpoint. So let me show some other examples of three-dimensional object made using the third trick. This is a picture of impossible object. This is impossible. Uh, we feel this is impossible because they, uh, it's a combination of two L-shaped objects, and each L-shaped object has two terminals, and one end with a visible face is usually uh, nearer to the viewer than the other end at which the face is invisible. But the visible part, meaning nearly part, is hidden by the invisible part, the further part, at two points, and so this contradicts the depth relations. But we can construct the three-dimensional structure using the third trick. And if we change our viewpoint, the object is like that. We can see that the faces are connected by angles other than 90 degrees. And so the, each <coughs> face is uh, uh, parallelograms instead of rectangles. And the section is also the parallelogram instead of square. This is another example, endless loop of stairs. This can also be reconstructed as three-dimensional structures. And if we change the viewpoint, the structure is like that. Among four of the three steps are normal steps, but the other one, the rear side, has a structure with slanted faces. But we see this from a special viewpoint, and everything becomes uh, Next angular. 
So I construct this kind of object using the unfolded surface drawn by the computer, <coughs> like that. Now, by similar method, method we can construct many, many uh, such objects. And let me just briefly show the mathematics behind this. So, the how to make impossible object using non-rectangularity trick. First, we assume we make and place the three assumptions. First, objects are bounded by planar faces. Second, objects are seen from general viewpoint, and so the face of an object does not degenerate to a line in the picture. And third, edge types are known, such as convex edge, concave edge, or silhouette edge. Then, uh, given the picture, we can construct a system of equations uh, to check whether the object is really possible or not. Suppose that we have a three-dimensional XYZ coordinate system and place the picture, given picture, on the XY plane and assume that uh, it is the orthographic projection of the object in space. And for the ice vertex, we assign the coordinates x i y i z z i, and because we know the projected plane picture, and so the x i and y i are known variables, known constant. Only the unknown variable is z i. Uh, I denote the unknown variables by red underlying. For the j space of the object. Uh, we assign the equation of the face equation, plane equation, ajx plus bjy plus z plus gj equals zero. And a, j, b, j, c, j are all unknown variables. And suppose that we know the ice vertex should be on the j face, then we can substitute these coordinates to this equation, and we get this equation, which is linear in unknowns. And we, can, and we can make similar equations for every pair of vertex and face containing it. And so we collect them all. We get the system of linear equations, which I denote by big A w equals zero. Big A is a given uh, constant matrix, and the w is a vector of unknown variables. And the picture also has relative depth information. For example, this edge, uh, we know that this is a convex edge, then the face, the left face, when extended, should go between the viewer and the ice vertex, which is on the right face. Now in that case, we have this kind of inequality. Recall that, that if the ice vertex is exactly on the J space, we have equality here. Now the ice vertex is behind the face, and so the equality symbol is replaced by this inequality. We can collect similar inequalities and get the system of linear inequalities, which I denote by big B, W is greater than zero. Then we can prove that the given picture represent an object correctly if and only if the system of equations and the inequalities we have just constructed has solutions by which we can recognize the realizable object and realizable picture. So, so if the system has solutions, object is realizable and we can actually construct the object using one solution. Uh, on the other hand, if the system has no solutions, we can judge that the object is really impossible. It cannot be constructed. So the next question, even if these pictures are re realizable as three-dimensional object, why we feel these pictures impossible? I understand the following. These pictures are composed of only three directions of lines for example, this picture is composed of the three directions of the red lines. And in that case, 
it seems that our brain feels that uh, faces are connected by 90 degree angles, only rectangles. And if we use rectangles, we cannot construct this. And so our brains feel that they are impossible. That is my understanding. So that this kind of 3D illusion occurs uh, <clears throat> from the interactions of two things. One is a mathematical fact that uh, if we are given the picture and the viewpoint, there are infinitely many solutions which give the same picture. On the other hand, uh, from the psychological fact, and when we see pictures, our brains uh, perceive some restricted uh, range of objects, such as a rectangular object and so on. This gap makes the um, main source of the 3D illusion. That is what I understand. And starting with this consideration, I have created many kinds of impossible solutions, uh, impossible objects, and recently I classified them into categories, and these uh, objects I categorized as first generation and named them anomalous objects because they are the <coughs> realization of anomalous pictures. Anomalous pictures are the pictures of impossible objects. So let me show other categories of impossible objects. Next one is the impossible motion illusion. Let me show them by examples first. In this case, the object looks like ordinary, but when we insert or we add motions, the motion looks impossible. We see a vertical pole and rectangular windows in both sides. And now the building red lot is a straight hard lot. windows simultaneously in this way. The motion looks like impossible, but if we rotate, we can understand that the motion is not, <laughs> does not take physical law. Uh, instead, the object itself is different but from what you perceive. But the interesting thing is that the, from this angle, we understand the true shape of the object. But if we rotate the object to the initial positions, maybe for most of you, the planes perceive the rectangular object. And so we can enjoy the kind of illusion again and again. Next example. This example also showed that uh, our planes like light angles very much. Four and four patches. The patches looks like uh, horizontal and mutually perpendicular. Now the red ring is coming. That is a plane ring, but it hangs like that, meaning that uh, it, is, it passes behind the pole, but in front of all the four patches. That looks like impossible. But the reality is that all the four parties extend backward, and so it's natural that the red ring hang like that. Here again, we remove the ring. And please remember the true shape of the object. All the four parties are extended backward, but that we know that. But if we rotate the object and go back to the initial position, most of you perceive the horizontal patches extending mutually perpendicular. So the, our brains ignore our knowledge about the true shape of the object. They like the perpendicular, the rectangular object very much. Next one, I put balls on the slopes. (laughs) 
Yes, balls are rolling up in both directions. And so I didn't use a trick that the uh, uh, desk is slanted. Desk is actually the horizontal. If we change our viewpoint, we can understand that the balls are rolling downhill according to the gravity. And please note that the direction of the four columns supporting the uh, slopes, they extend in different directions. But from this special viewpoint, all the four columns look parallel. And so our brains consider that the uh, uh, par uh, columns are perpendicular to the desk surface. And the longer columns support the higher part that is our brains uh, consider. So because of that, the direction of the orientation of the slope is perceived opposite. The same trick is used, the next one, so. Okay, every year there is a contest named Best Illusion of the Year Contest. In 2010, I got the first prize with this. And of course, the balls are center, so the center should be the lowest, and we can understand this from this direction, but uh, if we remove the balls and go back to the initial viewpoint, then our brain can perceive different the objects in the center, looks like highest. So you may agree that uh, our planes like light angles next angles very much. One more example. motion illusions. Now when we see them, the object looks like ordinary and the motion looks like impossible. But the reality is that the object itself is unusual and the motion uh, is obeying the physical law. It's ordinary. And I construct this kind of object in the following way. First, we choose an ordinary object and next, we project it to some planes and get the picture of the ordinary object. And finally, I construct a system of equations and inequations I have just shown you and find the solution. There are many solutions, and among them, I can choose one object which will make interesting motion. But the <clears throat> similar impossible motion was known from old, I think. The, one of the oldest one is Ames Lou. Ames is Albert, Adelbert Ames, American. And he constructed a non-rectangular room, as shown on the left. But that room is special in the sense that if we see it from a special viewpoint, it looks like rectangular room. And so if we stand at the two corners, their height looks like very different. And if they change their positions, their perceived heights also exchange. This is a kind of impossible motion. 
And the impulsive motion is also observed in our daily life. For example, this is a Japan special road called Mystery Road in Japan. And when we see it from here to there, it looks like a downhill. But actually, it is uh, uphill. And its downhill is uh, more strongly perceived from here. If we drive like that, uh, we, maybe you agree that we are downhill, going downhill. But this is not the downhill, but out, uh, um, uphill that can be proved if we place a ball there. The ball is rolling toward us, which means that the slope itself is uh, uphill toward. So the anti-gravity motion or impossible motion is not uh, <laughs> only the story of the uh, laboratory e exercise. It happens in the real world. And also we can make a large scale object like a load. And this is a large object placed in the campus yard of my university, major university. And the truth is that the center is the highest. And so the, let's say, example, she can move like that. But the uh, <laughs> motion looks like uh, anti-gravity motion. And the still larger one is uh, constructed in the, with the snows. And this is the story of last year, but they decided to do that again. And the next weekend, when I go back to Japan, I will make this um, kind of snow slide again. So I have just shown you the two kinds of uh, impossible objects. First is an uh, anomalous object, and the second is an uh, impossible motion object. Now I will show other objects gradually. So I have just shown you that the uh, <coughs> illusion comes from the fact that uh, there are infinitely many possibilities for a given picture. So this means that uh, we can specify two shapes. Uh, suppose that we want to be, we want some object which looks like circular from this viewpoint and it's a square from this point. So we can construct a system of equations for these circles and for these squares and combine those two systems of equations and solve it. If it has solutions, we get some space curve which looks like circular from this direction and which looks like square from this direction. So this is the space curve, but we want to uh, observe or to perceive a uh, planar curve. And for that purpose, we use, use the next trick. Suppose that we have a line segment, one <coughs> short lines, and move it in space arbitrarily without changing its directions. Then we get the swept surface, which is a cylinder-like surface. And for this kind of cylinder surface, when we see it, the terminal edge curve usually looks like planar, even though it can be a space curve. But uh, our brains like left angles, and so uh, because this length is all the same, uh, we usually perceive that the edge curve is planar instead of curved. We use this trick and construct the third generation impossible object. Let me show you examples. So we use mirror to give you the two directions view simultaneously. This is a mutual garage, and please look at the roof. Now the mirror is coming. The roof, direct view and the mirror image are quite different, but they come from the same object. 
that can be understood for a way rotating. If we rotate it by uh, 180 degrees around the vertical axis, the direct view and the mirror image exchange their place. And if we do that again, we'll get the initial image. From these directions, we understand that the roof is neither round nor corrugated. But our planes forget about that and perceive this kind of Another example. It looks like a cylinder, but the, each curve is a space curve. It's sometimes up and sometimes down. But when we see it from these angles, they look like a planar curve, but it's source of the illusion. So this is a third generation impossible object. I name it the ambiguous cylinders because it's a cylinder type object. And if we see it from two special directions, they have quite different shape. For example, from one direction, it's a moon, and from another, star, flower, butterfly, crescent, star, and so on. And this is another example. Direct view contains 12 um, circular cylinders, but in the mirror, only six circular cylinders. The um, general view of the object is like that, but it's difficult to see the correct shape because the, from this direction also they will have illusions. Those are the <coughs> third generation, ambiguous cylinders. Next, I go to the fourth generation, which I named partly invisible objects. <coughs> Sorry. Here, I show the four typical examples of this kind of object. Upper left, when we see the object directly, it uh, looks like a regular hexagonal cylinder on its side. But in the mirror, the lower half disappears. In the upper light, the hexagonal cylinder looks uh, uh, yeah, projected on the mirror as it is, but the rooster, which doesn't exist in the original uh, image, appears in the mirror. And the third one, the upper half disappears, and in the fourth one, the cylinder is reflected as it is, but the hand disappears and the rooster up here. Let me show what is happening by videos. in the mirror, we rotate it. <laughs> the lower half is hidden by the upper half. Actually, the upper half only is the correct shape of the hexagonal cylinders, and the lower half is a horizontally oriented picture. And if we see the horizontal picture from the opposite direction by the same angles, 
The height is reversed. That is a general geometric property. Using that, we can construct this kind of partly hidden object. Let me show a little of mathematics. Suppose that we have a horizontal plane, and on it we have a surface. And if we see it from a first view direction and project the object on the picture plane, then we have a picture on the horizontal plane. And next we see the picture from the second view direction, which opposite and has the same angle. Then the perceived uh, uh, surface is just a reverse reversed height object. So the <coughs> horizontal picture has this kind of <coughs> natures in general. And I used it in the following way. First, we place uh, hexagonal cylinders like that. It is mirror symmetric with a central horizontal plane. And project this hexagonal cylinders along the first view directions. Then the upper part is projected on the D sub 1, and the lower half part is projected on D sub 2. And if we see it from the second view directions, this lower half coincides with the upper half, and the originally upper part, the pictures of upper part coincide with the lower part. And so, if we replace the lower part with the horizontally oriented pictures, then from this picture, uh, from these directions, it looks like a hexagonal cylinders, but from these directions, the picture is completely hidden by the true upper side, and so the part, the hidden object can be constructed. The same trick is used here. Could you understand what is happening? The object looks like as it is, but the hang at the top, bottom, sometimes appear and sometimes disappear. The trick is that the lower half is a horizontal plane, but it is attached to both sides. And so from one side, the rooster at the bottom appears. From the other, it doesn't appear. The same trick can be used many times, <laughs> repeatedly, <laughs> and we can construct this kind of object. Now next, the third example. This is a little more mysterious because the upper half disappears. The, in the previous one, the lower half disappears. That can possible because the lower half is hidden behind the upper half. But now the upper half disappears. But it seems difficult that the upper half is hidden under the lower half. So what is happening? Now let me show you uh, by the videos again. Okay. The name of the object consists of H and V. H means a horizontal picture, V means a vertical structure. The trick is the same, but the horizontal picture is opposite, meaning that the upper half is replaced by the horizontally oriented pictures. And the lower half is the uh, actual uh, shape of the hexagon, hexagonal cylinders. <laughs> the part which looks like the upper part is a horizontal picture, and so if we see it from the opposite direction, it looks like the lower part. And the true lower part is hidden behind that. Is a trick. Finally, this example, the <coughs> cylinders is reflected as it is, but the hen disappears and the rooster appears. This is, let me show by video again. In this case, both the upper half and the lower half are replaced by horizontally oriented pictures. So. 
everything is just、uh, horizontally oriented pictures. And Blue Star only is standing. This is a trick. So they are the fourth generation, part three invisible object. Next, the fifth, fifth generation. I call it the topolo topology disturbing object.、Uh, on direct view and the mirror image, both contain two circular cylinders, but their the way of connection is different. In the direct view, they are separated, but in the mirror, they are intersecting. This one. <laughs> A little.、Um, from the first view directions, we want to be a separate two cylinders. So they are the two separated circles if we see it from above. And in the second view, they should be connected. And so first, we、uh, separate the mutually connected two circles into the non intersecting, just touching two、uh, shapes. And for the upper pair and for the lower pair, we apply the construction method for the ambiguous cylinder and construct the two ambiguous cylinders. And finally, we connect them. But、uh, <clears throat> from the first view, we want to them to be,、uh, appear to be separated. And for the second view, they want to be、uh, touching. And to achieve this purpose, we adjust the heights. Of the two objects. If we want this point and this point to appear to be touching, they, then we align them in the same view directions. That's a trick. And so this object is like that in the general directions. And we can construct similar object. Let me show only one more. <laughs> yes, we can use this kind of trick to make many topology disturbing objects. I have just shown you five different types of impossible objects. And what is next?、Um, I want to show two very new ones. One is this. I don't use mirror, just rotate the object. This is an arrow facing rightward. It likes to face rightward. <laughs> We cannot make it to the left. <laughs> the trick is the same. I apply the ambiguous cylinder illusion, but we can do like that. This is, I think, that the sixth generation. And finally, I will show the seventh generation. 
I have just shown, uh, constructed last week. And the object, when we put it on the mat surface, it looks like the left one. But if we put the same object on the mirror, then it looks like that. Meaning that the um, direct view of the object and its reflections, combine them all, we have a meaning of meaningful shape. Also, the original object itself has almost nonsense. Uh, and this is also the <coughs> simple application of the Ampere cylinder method. So I call it reflexively completed cylinders because the object itself is incomplete, but it is completed if we combine it with the mirror image. So we have just shown many types of impossible objects which can be created using math mathematics. And uh, these mathematical results may give new questions to psychology. For example, the <clears throat> in the impossible motion illusion, even if we rotate the object and understand the true shape of the object, still, if we go back to the initial viewpoint, uh, we, our brains, ignore or forget about the true shape and uh, perceive something different. Perceive the object which has most rectangular. Why? That is the question. And the second one is, uh, we have two eyes. And if we see the object from right and left eyes, we are very good at merging them to find the correct distance. But uh, in the case of the ambiguous cylinders, two directions of the views are given to both of the eyes, not each of the eyes. Then our brains cannot merge them, just confused. Why? That is a question. And finally, um, an interesting question is why our brains prefer rectangular object? Why we prefer light angles? Is it um, given when we are born, or is it learned or acquired in our experience? That is still unknown. Now, <clears throat> I have shown various examples of objects made using mathematics. And this is a conclusion. The various impossible objects can be constructed, and they are based on the following two facts. The first fact is mathematical, and saying that a single image does not have sufficient depth information. And so when we are given the picture, there are infinitely many possible shapes which give the same picture. And the second fact is a psychological fact, saying that the human brains have strong preference for rectangularity. And even though from the mathematical point we have many, many possibilities, our human brains does not consider that and just perceive the most rectangular object, that is uh, you know, our observation says. So seeing is not a simple and trivial task. It is rather a difficult task to see and the shape, to see the shapes of the object correctly. And this is what our mathematical analysis tells us. They are all what I prepared for this talk. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sugihara. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, thank you, Professor. On, on the ceiling of the Vatican Museum, there's a series of paintings painted by French illusionists oh. that are two-dimensional but appear to be three-dimensional as you look oh. at the ceiling as you walk through. Did, are you familiar with that? And did they just employ color and shade, or did they employ some of these principles that you've presented in your uh, material? Uh, here? You okay. know. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, the 
So that kind of illusion has the same property as I have shown. They are the pictures and the mind the object, but both has the, uh, if we have, if we perceive in our retina, uh, the similar two-dimensional pictures. And, but to, if the, our brain has a preference to perceive the good shape, it is uh, known in psychology, Good shape means that if it is better to interpret the picture as 3D object, then we perceive that. If it is better to perceive the uh, picture as 2D diagrams, we perceive 2D. Where I say better means of good shape, better shape, good shape. <laughs> Do I make sense? Um, so the I showed the 3D object, and they showed the 2D pictures. And the both are, when we perceive, uh, it's a 2D pictures in our retinas. And after that, what we perceive, uh, almost the same mechanism works. That is my understanding. Yes, Professor, thank you again for your intriguing presentation. It was very exciting. Thank you. Um, my, my question to you is, um, you know, we, we saw all of your illusions on a planar surface. Um, when you have these actual physical models, if you view them from the appropriate viewpoint, is the illusion still as compelling in three dimensions, or is it the planarity on the screen that really makes them, them so believable? Oh, okay. Yes, it's a good question. We have two eyes, and if we see the three-dimensional object directly, we usually have the uh, correct depth, and so the illusion is difficult to perceive. And uh, for this screen, even if you see by your two eyes, you can enjoy illusion. This is because when I take pictures of the videos, the camera has only one center of lenses, so the, when we take picture, the picture information um, is reduced to the seeing the object by only one eye. So when we see the object only one eye, we, have, we can enjoy the similar or same illusions. And also, the, if we make the object very large and see it, for more than 10 meters distance, then the binocular stereo doesn't work well. And so even if we see it from two eyes, we have the same illusion. So such as the snow slopes can be uh, enjoyed like that. And also I found that uh, some of the illusions are very strong. Even if we see it from this distance by two eyes, still we have illusions. Ambiguous cylinder is, uh, belongs to that kind. And uh, I don't have <laughs> the examples, but uh, yes, sometimes it happens by two eyes. I was wondering um, if the math that you were showing earlier was hard for you to learn and how long it took you to learn it. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot understand the question. The question was, how hard was the math to learn to do your, your illusions? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. And in Japan, the, this, the mathematics I used is a, a first or second year student level in the universities. Uh, mainly, we call it the linear algebra. And that is the most uh, um, basic mathematics. But uh, it's a little higher than the high school. <laughs> so if you go to the university and learn mathematics in the first or second years, then you can construct this kind of object by yourself, I think. Hi. Thanks. This has been very interesting. I do not have a strong math background, but one of the things I've kind of noticed in nature is I don't see a lot of squares or rectangles. So I was fascinated by the fact that you say that the human brain has a strong a uh, preference for rectangularity. And do you have any thoughts about that? 
You mean that why? Okay, I <laughs> cannot do, uh, tell the answer. And actually, the, we are interested in that. And uh, there are two possibilities. One is the it's a preference we acquired when uh, when we were born, and the other is a. Uh, Mm, the one we learn as we grow. And uh, once I try to check about that, one of the colleagues in our institute uh, mm, do the research in the, um, yes, he once visited the South, uh, no, Middle Africa to do interviews with hunting people. And we thought that they lived in some areas which, in which they do not have many rectangular objects. And uh, I asked him to bring my impossible motion videos, and he showed them, and he found that they also have illusions. But he said that uh, they also live in a rectangular world. And uh, so they still we have, we cannot solve that problem yet. How did you learn to view the illusions in different ways? How you what? How did you learn to view the illusions in different ways? Uh, for the African people, uh, yes. Actually, they, we think that they don't have the concept of illusions. And so we prepared a pair of videos. One is normal motion. And one is uh, impossible motion. Uh, first, the object appears. The appeared object is the same. But in one object, we, we put balls, they are rolling downhill. And in the other object, which is also, also which looks like the same, the balls are going uphill. And asked which is more interesting. And if we, they choose the second one, we understand that they have illusions. That is our way of checking. Uh, Sugihara, thank you very much. Very interesting. I was wondering if these effects are relevant to artificial intelligence and uh, systems that are trying to detect objects in motion, is it, is it helpful to have those illusions uh, mm. in those contexts, or um, <laughs> if you have any okay. relevant comments? Mm. It depends on the way of constructing artificial intelligences. If uh, we use the machine learning or deep learning in that case, and put the many data of the behaviors of the human beings, then I think that uh, artificial intelligence also have the similar illusions. But uh, if, they, if we construct artificial intelligence in a different way, uh, meaning that uh, uh, analyze how they um, perceive the object and what is true and what is tr uh, not true, if we separate this and carefully construct the artificial intelligence, then the, that intelligence will not have illusions. So it's, uh, depends on the way of constructing the artificial intelligence. I think we have time for one more question. Hi, uh, thanks for your presentation. Mm -hmm. So my question is about how you construct the illusions uh, from the infinite possible solutions that you have. Um, uh, do you experiment with them with different topologies? Uh -oh. Or uh, is there a lot of trial and error, or uh, mm. do you have some specific um, okay. protocol? The first, mm, the first step I found uh, this kind of illusion is that the, when I was young, I was doing the research on computer visions, in which my main problem is to construct software that can understand the three-dimensional shape of the object from 2D pictures. And when I completed my software, in order to check the behavior of the software, I show many pictures to that computer systems. 
And at that time, I, will, I also showed the pictures of impossible objects, expecting that the computer says it's impossible. But sometimes the computer constructs three-dimensional objects from impossible pictures. And I checked my software and found that uh, it's not the bug of the software, and, uh, but the, there are some pictures which can be reconstructed, although they are called impossible object. That the start of my finding of this kind of illusion object. And after that, <laughs> I consider them day by day, and sometimes I have some breakthroughs and try to find the different types of object. Let's thank Professor Sugihara once more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.